Hello friends and welcome back to Shanka Show, the channel where you can find stories about first-hand experience of life in the Soviet Union. My name is Sergei Sputnikov and back in July of 1971 I was born in the USSR. In this video we'll talk again about Leonid Brezhnev, because recently there was 40 years since his death. On November 10, 1982, Leonid Brezhnev passed away at age of 75. In 1982 I was 11 years old and I remember the events of that November quite well. The death of Leonid Brezhnev was a quite a shock for the whole country, mostly because he was at power for so long. He became the leader of the Soviet Union back in 1964 after he and his buddies removed Nikita Khrushchev from power and he remained at the helm all the way till his death in 1982, so for a total of 18 years. I don't recall anyone crying about Brezhnev's death, but definitely people were shaken and not sure about what's going on, especially because Soviet government was acting quite strange after Brezhnev's death. It was during those gloomy November days when Soviet people, including myself, experienced this situation when Soviet mass media, television and radio stopped their regular programming and started playing classical music on radio and showing ballet on TV. But soon we get used to those interruptions because right after Brezhnev, Andropov dropped off and we had classical music on the radio. Then Chernenka dropped off, we heard classical music on the radio. And in 1986, Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded and once again there was a classical music on the radio. And when in the end of April of 1986 there was classical music on the radio once again, I was confused because I thought it was Gorbachev who passed away, but he was so young. So I even asked my dad, like, do you think it's possible that Gorbachev passed away? Because there's no news on radio, no regular programming, just classical music. And my dad said, no. I think it's something happened at Chernobyl power plant. We had rumors already in our factory and they already taking drivers uh, to do evacuation. The death of Leonid Brezhnev kicked off so-called Gonku Nalafieta, how the Soviet people called it. could be translated as a coffin race, but Lafiet, it's actually cannon carriage because they were carrying a coffin, our leaders using the cannon carriage, Lafiet, so after Brezhnev, it was Andropov, it was Chernyanka, so they call it Gonka na Lafietach. As I mentioned earlier, Leonid Brezhnev was quite old in 1982, he was already 75. I mean, okay, now comparing with the age of the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, I guess Brezhnev wasn't that old, but he had a healthy lifestyle. He liked to smoke, he liked to drink, he went through the World War II, so his health was quite uh, fragile way before 1982. Back in 1976, Brezhnev actually had so-called clinical death, so he died but was recovered, but he actually never recovered, and he became a subject of so many jokes, so-called anecdote, because he really struggled uh, to read those long speeches that he had to do. He was fumbling, just being really looking pathetic, so I can tell you jokes about Brezhnev for hours. Уважаемые японские телезрители, я рад возможности выступить перед вами в день 60-летия Великой Октябрьской социалистической революции. Это... One of my favorite jokes about Leonid Brezhnev is when he was reading a speech about Olympics in Moscow back in 1980. So, in the middle of his speech, he suddenly paused, and then he said, Oh, 
O, O, so his helper kind of looked behind his shoulder like, Lenny de Lige, those are not O's, those are Olympics rings. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, who can forget famous Brezhnev's eyebrows? I honestly have no idea why no one bothered to actually take care of them. I have a, every time I go to get a haircut, the barber offers to trim my eyebrows and I smile, say, sure, go ahead. And that's one of the reasons why Brezhnev got a nickname, the Brow Cruiser. Instead of Battle Cruiser, we had a Brezhnev, the Brow Cruiser. If you follow my channel, you probably already watched the videos that I shared my experience about going to the Soviet schools. And one of the interesting details about Soviet schools, we never had snow days. We never skipped the school for those pathetic reasons like, oh, it's too cold or too snowy. But when Leonid Brezhnev passed away, we had our leader drop dead school day then when we skipped all the classes and we actually went to gym and we watched on TV the funeral and I actually decided to double check and sure enough uh, Leonid Brezhnev funeral happened on November 15th which was Monday and there was no school it was amazing and I already mentioned it before that when Andropov passed away next and we had another day off and then they announced that our next leader will be Konstantin Chernyanka and when I saw the picture of Konstantin Chernyanka and he's, I saw how old he is. I was very excited because I was like, man, we're going to have another day off very, very soon. And I was correct. And then those bastards in Kremlin chose Mikhail Gorbachev. And I looked at Gorbachev like, that guy is way too young. There'll be no day off anytime soon. And I was correct. I finished high school. No more days off. Another interesting detail that needs to be mentioned about death of Leonid Brezhnev is executive order which was issued on November 18, 1982, so it's one week after his death, and the name of that executive order was Ob Uvikavechini Pamiti Leonid Ilicha Brezhneva, which can be translated as about perpetuation of the memory of Leonid Ilich Brezhnev. This executive order deserves a separate video, but I just want to mention that it was basically renaming a lot of towns, factories, colleges, military outfits, ships, and such after Leonid Brezhnev. For example, the town of Nabirezhne Chelny was renamed into Brezhnev. Then, Hevik Cruiser, which currently is called Admiral Kuznetsov, carried name of Leonid Brezhnev between 1982 and 1987. Nuclear icebreaker Arctica between 1982 and 1986 also had the name of Leonid Brezhnev and many other interesting places. As I said, I'm going to make a separate video about it. But at any rate, the death of Leonid Brezhnev in November of 1982 marked the end of the era, era of the Brezhnev, era of so-called stability for some people. Some people consider there was an era of stagnation and the uh, changes were just around the corner. First, it was Yuri Andropov, who attempted to fix things Stalin way. And then, after a short reign of Chernenka, Mikhail Gorbachev came up with his Perestroika, Uskarenia, and Glasnost. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please don't forget to like it, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Sergey. Uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's correct. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergei is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling, for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture, 
So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So uh, let's.